JJ, did the Celtics figure out how to slow him down, Steph? I, I don't know if they figured out how to slow him down, but they certainly, again, stuck with their coverage. They stuck with their game plan. And, and as I mentioned, you know, that, that drop coverage over the last two games has worked much better than it worked the, the first three games. They're basically scoring about half as many points per possession in the last two games versus the first three. So this, that is working. The, the, the one play that really sticks out to me last night was in the fourth quarter. They ran their post split on the right side, right in front of their bench. Steph Curry came off, and we saw a similar play in the fourth quarter in Boston in game four. Derek White got a great rear view contest, and you saw uh, Robert Williams, I think it was, Robert Williams all the way back. You know, his, his man was a screener. You saw him all the way back. On this particular play last night, Al Horford lunged and basically trapped Steph Curry off that post split. Steph Curry made the simple play. He hit Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins got a lefty lay at the rim. We have not seen that play at all this series. That, that has not been an action. They have been content to let him shoot. And so even though he had an off shooting night, there was a sense of desperation. And, and I, I can attest to this as a shooter. Sometimes you just miss shots. And we have seen throughout Steph Curry's career, this playoff run, and even in these finals, yeah, he's killed. But, like, he's hitting ridiculously tough shots. And sometimes on night to night, you might just have an off night and you might not hit, hit the shots that you normally hit. And I thought that was a little bit of the case last night. And the other part was them sticking in that drop coverage, but then also off the ball, just having a crazy sense of desperation, which they hadn't had in the first four games by bringing that to second defender in there. Steph Curry was 0 for 9 last night for the three-point range. I counted at least four three-point shots where he was wide open. He just missed. It happens. I mean, he's the greatest shooter God has ever created. I've never seen any child body shooting basketball like him. He's entitled. It happens, okay? I'm not worried about that at all. And I would remind everybody that figuring him out, we came into last night's game fresh off a 43-point performance by Steph Curry in game four. On 14 of 26 shooting, 7 of 14 from three-point range, averaging 34 on 50% shooting from the field and 49% shooting from three-point range. What the hell you mean figured him out? One game because he missed? All of a sudden they figured him out? That is just idiotic. It's no, it, this, Did I say that? When you, Why, what, are you calling no, me an idiot? No, I no, didn't no, say not, that. not you. I'm I, not talking about you. Okay, I'm, not talking about, right. I'm talking about the question. I'm talking about the question. All right. All right? I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm saying for anybody who would think that, it's idiotic because here's the deal. Steph Curry had contested shots in the first four games of the NBA Finals. And he was doing what he was doing despite the fact that some of those shots were contested. So the point that I'm trying to make is that last night he just missed. But I didn't see the Boston Celtics in terms of a hand in his face. And I know that you can schematically you can get into the coverage that they, that they, that they exercised against him, J.J. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, contested, uncontested. I saw the same amount of opportunities and the same amount of contested shots. He just made them before last night. Last night was a struggle. Let's see what happens in game six. I'm willing to bet my check. You won't see an 0-4 from Steph Curry from three-point range again. I'm willing to bet my check on that. I, I don't see that happening. That's a, that's a pretty safe bet if we look historically. Yeah. How about given that? that he, yeah. Given that he, I think 132 playoff games is the yeah. first time going 0 for. Hadn't done it since November, I believe, of 2018 right. in a regular season game. Like He's going to come back and he's going to make threes. The point, I, the point I, I, to, to add on to what you said, and this is not in, in disagreement at all, it's just to supplement what you just said about Steph Curry and, and, and really any truly great player. I'm not talking top 15, top 20 guys going through a, a, right. their first deep playoff run. I'm talking about the truly great players. They have seen every coverage. They have seen every defense. They've been guarded by small pests. They've been guarded by long wing defenders. They've been guarded by bulldogs like Marcus Smart. They've seen every defender on them. They've seen every coverage. 
There's no figuring out how to guard these guys. Steph Curry is one of the greatest players of all time, one of the greatest offensive players of all time, one of the greatest shooter or the greatest shooter of all time. You can't, you're not figuring him out. Some nights you get lucky and he goes 0 for, or he has a 2 for 12 game from three, but that, that is, has really as little to do with defense as him just missing. You can try and make it tough on him, but he's just that good. And, and, and let's call it what it is, J.J. Reddick. The fact that Steph Curry was 0 for 9 yesterday is why you sitting here thinking that Boston's done. Because they lost the game despite the fact that Steph Curry was 0 for 9. And you know that ain't happening again. That's part of That's a big reason why you feel the way that you feel right now. And I don't blame you. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.